in the beginning. We're all guilty of forgetting our roots, of forgetting where we came from. Going to work before we had unions, a hundred years ago, for example, wasn't anything like what it is like today. Retail, workers put in 12 or 15 hour days. Plants and factories were not safe. And there was no overtime. And no mandatory breaks. Basically, corporations could police themselves. Hey, people didn't retire from uh, jobs like these. They just stopped working. It's pretty common for workers to lose an arm or a finger or a hand because there was no authority in place to enforce safety standards. There's no calling in sick. Sick or not, you have to go to work. Pension? Please, nobody got pensions. They're lucky enough to get a thank you. Nobody had health insurance back then. It was either you get them to work at your own risk, or you didn't work at all. From all of you good workers, good news to you I'll tell of how the good old union 1888. Has come in here to dwell. 1897. Meat Cutters Union First Charter. 1901. Textile Workers First Charter. 1948. Healthcare Workers. Targeted for organizing. 1976. First woman elected vice president of Meat Cutters Union. 1978. Professional division expands to include healthcare workers. The Industrial Revolution was a major step forward for organized labor. It was there that the country saw vast amounts of wealth begin to pile up with small groups of businessmen. After the Industrial Revolution, the, the classes um, grew apart even more. They were more rich and more poor, and the disparity um, grew, and so there was a great need for the labor movement to bridge that gap. And it introduced us to, to misery and experiences that we'd not known before in this country. These guys, they relied on workforces in the hundreds to make products that made them richer than kings, and yet they shared almost none of it with the workers on the factory floor. Finally, people here and in Europe began to say enough is enough, and they started to form unions. Labor delegates representing 16 million workers gather in New York for the history-making merger of the American Federation of Labor and the Congress of Industrial Organizations. The merger is the culmination of 20 years of effort. We realized early on, and the employers have now followed us, that putting together smaller entities into one big entity creates strength. People talk about mergers as though they were invented by corporations to streamline efficiency. The fact is that organized labor deserves the credit for making mergers popular when smaller unions began joining forces with larger ones. 1979. Meat cutters and retail clerks merge, forming the United Food and Commercial Workers. 1981. In 1937, um, in an area near Detroit, Michigan, Women took over for a sit-down strike a major retail corporation, Woolworth's Five and Dime. They did it on their own, and they, um, as a result, women became known as a real force in the labor movement. There was no eight-hour day. There was no overtime pay. There was no vacation pay. There was no holiday pay. There were none of the things that you enjoy in a collective bargaining agreement until labor unions came along. And that was the labor movement. That's why we have benefits at the workplace. That's why we have um, equality at the workplace. That's why we have certain rights that we never had before. And I can assure you, if there weren't labor unions today to hold these employers' feet to the fire, those things would go away quickly.